God's worship. And in Him we don't have to be all that extra. But they don't know our story. Show me your worship and I tell you where you have been. Show me your worship and I tell you what God has done for you. Ah, forget about those who think they're extra. Forget about those who think that that oil could go to somebody else. But only if you know once I was lost but now I'm found. They don't know the extent to which we were lost. They don't know when we were abused mentally, physically. They don't know. In the early hours of the morning when nobody could be found. That God turned up in my bedroom. They don't know. Hallelujah. When hopelessness set in, they don't know. Hallelujah. So go ahead and break the alabaster box. Go ahead and just worship. For all power is due to His name. All honor, all glory. Ah, if you're having a problem worshiping, just look back to where you were and just think of what that God has done. It's also when I look back and see where you brought me from. It's been a long way when I look back over my life. I think things over and can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. So if you're having a problem to worship, just remember the testimony. Although some of us worship in wings spirit off. And that a double shape has never done anything. Just the fact that he's gone. Just the fact that I'm alive. Just the fact that I have food on my table. Just the fact, hallelujah, that I'm clothed in my right mind. Just the fact that I'm not eaten out of the garbage bin. Just the fact that Satan said I was supposed to be born 21 when the dirt was break down. But go on, I've got enough to worship him. I've got enough to worship him. Many went to bed last night, but never woke up this morning. Some woke up this morning. But Eric, I see you. Some never live to see the end of 2015. Some start in 2016 and they died. But I'm alive in this house. I'm alive. And where there is life, there is hope. That's why I'm here to worship. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are my God. You're all together lovely. You're all together worthy. I greet you in the precious name of Jesus. I give respect to the man of God of this house, the angel of the house, hallelujah, Bishop Faulkner. And I give respect to his dear wife, First Lady Faulkner, assistant pastors, hallelujah. I give respect to the women's president, hallelujah, uh, assistant pastors and their wives. Uh, you need your wives to stand with you because your wife can break you or make you. Shanga da diabo saba. I greet the woman's president and her husband who's ahead of her. Shada la la bakotosa. And I send an anointing on your husband this morning. Shada la la a priestly anointed to stand up and be the man that God wanted to be. Shanda, hey God, I love to move in the spirit. Ah, God, I greet your co-workers on the committee. I greet you and you and you and especially you all, the elders, ministers, missionaries, evangelists. Hallelujah. I greet all the visitors. I greet all my father's children. And I greet you out there in the life stream land. Ah, uh, God, as we worship, join in to worship God, as we give him all the glory, my heart and my love go to you. And the El Shabakasanda, under the voice of the anointing of the Father of God, for I shall lift up my eyes onto the hill. From whence cometh my help, my help, cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. I don't care what the enemy is telling you. He that keepeth Israel shall not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall I'm talking to you, preserve you, 
from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. to watch over this word this weekend. I don't care what loose in hell and I don't know what I lose in heaven. I don't know what shepherd to counteract what hell has released. Every spirit shall be subject to the higher God. Every spirit that came to hear man, I bind that spirit and I put a spirit to hear from Almighty God. Ah, there is no flesh that shall glory in the presence of God. I must decrease and he must increase. Shut under the Yamaha. Do I have somebody in this house who's ready to decrease? Ah, da, 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 do I have somebody who didn't come to look to the bishop, who didn't come to look to the woman, so the man, but came to look to heaven for promotion come, not from the east nor from the west. You are weary. I should have been promoted already. I never, never go sata. But man don't promote you. God promotes you. I never, never go sata. And your gifts shall make room for you. And lead you before great man. I never, never go sata. Now your gift this morning is to be a worshiper. No pun up here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, address the musicians this morning. As I begin my message, I'm going to ask you, music is an awesome part of worship. That's why music takes so many out of the church. Because as we establish the other night, Satan himself is music. And when God kicked him out of heaven, God didn't take the music from him. God didn't take the tablets. Uh, when God kicked him out of heaven, God didn't take his beauty. Hallelujah. That's why he's able to transform himself into an angel of light. So you are in Satan territory, musicians. Hallelujah. And without you knowing, you are wrestling between staying steadfast to God and being used of the devil. Ah, God, so if he can get you to just come and play. Ah, there's some musicians, when the words start, they go and take their coffee break. But I want to talk to you and just exhort you before I start my message that as a part of the family of God, in the ministry that God has placed you all, when you, God, head Osha, get in the house, every instruction you follow that hallelujah when it's time to play you play but when it's not time to play you put that instrument down and you get up uh, and when they say everybody get up you get up too and when they say take up your bible you make sure you take your bible too because you gotta declare i am what the word say 
I am or else you're just going to be an ordinary musician. How many know that David was an anointed musician? That when the evil spirit fell on Saul, the sent to call of David. And when he played the music, the evil spirit stumped off him. That's what music does. And that's why we got to be careful what we listen to. Hallelujah. Uh, music brings back memories. Music link you to another world. When you listen to a song, it just takes you. Oh my God. So you can imagine, imagine if it's a wrong song. Shh. God come to fix things this weekend. And I pray you'll just embrace it with everything inside of you. So I want to speak a word of encouragement to all you musicians. That you get in one accord with everything else. And let God do through you too. That when you play, you play under the anointing. When you strum the bass and guitar and you touch the drums, heaven stand up. destroys the youth. Back in the day, we never had to preach. Sometimes the choir does stand up to minister and the music and church mash up. Heaven move out and all who need only go start speaking. No word, nothing else, just music. Bring back the old days. Bring back the old time religion. Bring back the old time power. In this house this morning, come to speak to somebody. I'm going to try to do it as quickly, hallelujah, as we can. Last night we started, oh, on the way, God told me to tell you that the overflow is already here. God is just waiting on us to embrace it. Hallelujah. You can give somebody a gift. Sister Paula, I can tell you, I know Sister Paula from 111. I looked at her and I said, that must be Paula Cohen. Uh, it's so good to see you. Hallelujah. Back in the day before I got married, that's the church I was in. I can give you a gift. Unless you get it from where you are and you come take this gift, then this gift has no use to you. It doesn't mean I'm not giving you the gift. It means you have not embraced it. It means you have not taken it. You have not accepted it. So God told me that the overflow is already in this house. That's why we have been experiencing what we're experiencing. But this word comes to tell us what we need to do to get up and take it and embrace it because where we are the enemy has diluted and distracted and messed up our minds how many know that the battle is in the mind this morning if you can get me in my mind then I've lost the battle that's why in Ephesians 6 God said put on the helmet of salvation because if you're not saving your mind you're not saved nowhere else because this is the seed that sent all the messages when I must move my hand it's my head that tells oh God send a message through the nerve ending in my body tell the hand to move so if my mind not saved no other part of me is saved hallelujah so if Satan can get into my mind and fool in my mind and mess up my mind then he has won the battle but how many know that don't wait till the battle is over because as long as God has clothed my mind that I'm going to win. I don't care what you're going through this morning. I don't care what is happening around you. If you can look past it, that's why God says if you have faith, the size of a mustard seed, you don't understand that scripture. You know what that scripture is telling us? Our mind is so powerful. I watched a documentary where somebody concentrated on a glass and moved it. Meditate and break it. Smash it. If we would use, we are only using point zero 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 a little bit of this mind. Powerful. So when God said, if you have faith, I went out and bought some mustard seed. I'm sorry I didn't bring them with me. I shared it with my Sunday school class last Sunday. They were shocked to see how tiny it is. If you look at one, you can't see it. You look like a dot. God says if you use up just that section of this mind, just one, you can speak to the mountain. And say, mountain, move. Get out of my way. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is not just to mash up the place. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is not just to speak in tongues and shout. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is authority. When I walk in and the demons 
see me. He must know me by name. He must know who I am. And my redeemed Graham Sadler, Jesus. He said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. He said, but who are you? I don't know you. Hallelujah. That's what God want to bring us into this weekend. Our authority. He want us to praise. In the overflow, Sister Sherry, comes authority. Where you speak to the wind. Speak it. Just speak the word. In the beginning, God said, let there be. And there was. That's the God you have inside of you. Wrap up in the Holy Ghost. So if he said light and light appear, you got that power in your belly to send the word. Send it to Toronto. Send it to Jamaica. Send it to India. Speak to the demon. Go. Send. Send. Shh. What you got is not just to speak in tongues. So Joel was a prophet unto Judah, as we said last night. One of the twelve tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The southern kingdom, Judah and Benjamin. And this particular hallelujah that we read scripture was him speaking to judah was him telling judah that listen now the judgment of god is about to come there are two judgments he was talking about the impending judgment of that day but he's also talking about the impending judgment of this day that's why verse 28 says in the last day said god i will pour out this is the last days that was not the last day the first part of the prophecy belonged to them the rest of it belonged to us hallelujah which was fulfilled in acts 2 38 on the day of pentecost but that's not the only outpouring that god is going to do before the rapture hallelujah and so god spoke to them and the purpose as i said last night of that prophecy uh god was to let judah know that if they repent god is going to give them the overflow god is going to give them restoration of all that the enemy had stolen the conquer one the power one hallelujah individually they needed to repent but nationally as a corporate body they needed to repent also and the main theme of thought was when you repent god will always turn because god is not a god that any man should die i don't care where you've been this morning i don't care what you did that's yesterday god don't care as long as you come to him and you return he said return unto me and i will return unto you said the lord he promised to remarry the backsliders god don't hold it against you when god forgive you you are forgiven man take months to forgive you and weeks ah uh, god i am here judging you that you are uh, you see her you see him but while i'm judging you you have repented the rapture come you have the holy ghost you have on the name you god leave me judging you satan is the one that go back in the deep sea and dig up what we have done and every time we try to worship he flashes before us but i come to let you know your forgiveness is imminent once you repent once you don't go deliberately and presumptuously and keep doing it and even that time god will give mercy when you say god forgive me but there's gonna come a day when he's gonna draw the line he said but you call to me i will not answer you i will laugh at your calamity because you're using me For you to get your overflows right there yes. but for you to get up and embrace it yes. he said i want all of your heart yes. return to me with all your heart fully, fully. fully with everything inside of you i don't want you to come to me i'll step in yes. i want you to come with me yes. to me with everything, with everything. 
And as we said last night, I started looking at some of the stuff and I want to finish it. Because God gave me those words. I didn't come with a pre-prepared message. That's why when I come, I lock away. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bishop and, and, and First Lady only see me when I'm eating. They don't see me after that. Talk to them. Hallelujah. I don't have conversations to talk about anybody or anything. Because when God speaks to me, it must come directly from the throne. And when God speaks it, ah, oh God, it must touch the heart. The word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Hallelujah. And so God gave me this word yesterday. As I locked it inside, I was in that room every day, all day. When I came out, I saw my son briefly. He said, if you need anything, I'm downstairs. Hallelujah. God told me that part of why we cannot uh, embrace the overflow and the authority in him is our commitment. Yes. And we talked last night about those of us who only come to church on a Sunday. Sunday morning only. Or sometimes we catch God back on Sunday night. And the one who gives us strength to go through the whole week. We don't think we can come back to give him a little prayer and prayer meeting. To give him a little time and youth. And to give him a little time and Bible studies. We come back to nothing else. Hallelujah. God spoke last night about those. Hallelujah. Who even when they don't have to work on a Sunday. Because they get in double time. They accept it. Hallelujah. Oh ye of little faith. David said I was young. And now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No he seen obeying bread. I can preach to you. Because I walk away from my job of earning 150 to 200,000 on an average per month as a manager in Jamaica over 15, 16 years ago and walked into ministering to God's people to be a servant. Say, so nobody else can preach this. I can preach this. You'll never see me naked. Because God said, when you give me first, I will do everything else. So God spoke about your commitment. You find everything else to do instead of coming in the house of God. Uh, Satan has set it up because we're in a society and I didn't get to touch this. So I'm going through it. Uh, God, everything they have is on a Sunday. Every game is on a Sunday. Every practice is on a Sunday. Everything our children have is on a Sunday. The devil is a liar. My children play sports and the first thing I told my daughter's coach is that she won't be here on a Sunday. Catch her during the week. Every now and then, I'll give her one Sunday. Shut up, Asata, as a concession. But you're not going to have my baby every Sunday. You have something that's called generational curse. Where we have inherited. My grandmother had a baby when she was 12. My mommy had a baby when she was 13. I come have a baby when I'm 10. I don't have a shut up that we need to break and we need to cut in the name of Jesus with a sword. But there is something else that's called a generation of blessing that you can pass to your children. I got saved when I was seven. My baby got saved when she was six. And my other baby got saved when she was seven. Baptized and filled, speaking in tongues. You gotta speak. You got authority over your children. You don't jump and let the world system rule your house. You don't get up and be deceived of the enemy. She has to be at this. She don't have to be at nothing. God said, I come for commitment and I want relationship. I don't want you to visit. God said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most I mean you live there dwell mean you live it don't mean you come once a year on vacation or twice per year he that dwelleth in the sea I want you to live with me so I can speak to you as I spoke to Moses as I spoke to Abraham God said how can I do this thing to Sodom and hide it from my friend God wants a friend in you God want to be able to communicate it's hard to you oh God it feels good I can tell you anything I don't know it's cause God don't want me to know it but before you open your mouth God tell me Shabba what you gonna say that comes from living in the presence of God and it's not boring or oh, can you say church 
church is boring. When church gets bored, it's because you, you have allowed yourself to get bored. There is so much to do in the house of God. There is so much to draw from the anointing of God that there is no time to get bored. I have never been bored from seven until now. God said, I want commitment. Why do we come together? He said, for sake not the assembling of yourselves. Because I am sharpened iron. When I am feeling down and I feel like I can't worship, when I come through the door, I just want to hear your hallelujah all of a sudden. I don't let the ram to anybody in this house. I come in and I didn't feel like coming. And when I come, I see your worship. And all of a sudden, my hand gone up too. For your strength is my strength and my strength. Oh God, I was home feeling down because something happened to me. And I thought it was me alone. But when testimony come, you got up honestly. And you say, I fell this week. And you told your story. Then God said, you see, it's not you alone. And I go shabba at the same way. God said, return unto me with all your heart. It means you were there and you left it. The scripture, the song says, take me back to the Lord. To the place where I first was. Can somebody remember? When I just got saved, if you ask me a question, I don't even want to answer you until I think it out. Because I feel like I'm going to tell a lie. Shanda Dabasa. Take me back to that sensitivity. Lord God, where I don't want to offend you, God. Take me back to the place where I first believe. In me you were there and you left. So God said in his word in Joel, return unto me with all your heart. So can you remember now when you used to be a worshiper? Can you remember that your worship didn't depend on what anybody say about you? Can you remember that when you came in, you don't care if they thought you were crazy? I want to take you back. God said take you back to the time when you were a worshiper. That when you came in, when you opened your mouth, your hallelujah changed your atmosphere. When you're not in church, then no. Can you remember? When you were in this tush? Can you remember? When the Holy Ghost anoint your legs and you would run around the church? Can you remember? When you would dance in the Holy Ghost? Dance like David dance till you dance your clothes off. Can you remember when you used to grab the timbre? Yes, we don't play timbrels anymore, some of us. Shabbat, bring back the timbrels. Praise God on the timbrels and the dance. We don't dance no more. When there's a little girl in church, as a night you come down, all you see is people dancing. What we want to bring in God's house is fixed dance and human being fixed up with our woman going. God, I left that when I got saved. I wanted to dance. I was a dancer at that young age. I was told when you accept God, when you come in, it's a different kind of dance. It's a Holy Ghost dance. We leave that dance. I know you want to bring back in God's house what I leave behind. That dance is a liar. God said, I've given you a holy dance. And when you dance, when you dance, you trample the enemy. Well, that's why he has kept you in. That's why he has tied your legs. Because spirit of snake are in the house. Deceptive spirit. When you dance, Oh, 
remember those days you were like the woman in St. Matthew 9 yeah. from verse 20 yeah. you were like that woman in the issue of blood yeah. everybody was wrong Jesus yeah. crowd was wrong him yeah. Lord God Almighty but when she touched him yeah. he said somebody touch me that's how your worship was everybody was making noise but your worship supersede everybody worship and when you said hallelujah your worship touched God that God has somebody touch me How can you say somebody touch you in this crowd? But I want to tell you that when your worship touch God is different. Everybody can scream. Everybody can make a show. Everybody can run up and down. But when you touch Jesus in a genuine worship, Lord God Almighty, the Holy Ghost is figuring you, my baby. Hallelujah. You, you, you. You're looking away from me, but God is figuring you. Don't be on the spot. When God loves you, that's what he does. He pick you out. He's in a family and nobody is saved. And God just pass everybody and drag you out. Don't get conscious. Just understand that the enemy want to take you out. But God wants a commitment so he can stop you. He can bring you into a new authority and a new anointing. Can you worship God in this house? When you worship God, really worship Him, you don't need nobody to pump you. From your touch the door, entering His gates with thanksgiving, into His courts with praise. You're coming here with a worship. You come to get something, but you bring something with you. Hallelujah. So you make preaching easier. You make leading the service easier. You make ministering easier. When the choir sings easier. When the miss, ah, uh -uh, because you brought a worship. Do you remember the days when you used to bring a worship? God said, when you want to embrace the overflow, you go back. I keep going back to the well of grace and praise. Go dig up back in worship. Go put it back. 